Number 47, what two common assumptions can simplify calculation of equilibrium concentrations in a solution of a weak acid or a weak base? Now, it doesn't really matter um, which one we do here. I guess I'll, I'll perform a weak acid equation, but you could easily just write an equation for a weak base. But the easiest way to find out these assumptions is to write a balanced equation. Let's take HCN. HCN is a weak acid, right? And it has aqueous, right? It's in a solution with water. So I'm just going to say plus H2O. And remember, water is a liquid. Now, since we're weak, we are in equilibrium. We don't dissociate 100%. And remember, if this is a weak acid, maybe I'll just say WA. Wah. <laughs> um, remember, acids will donate the hydrogens to the conjugate base, or actually the base, right? So CN minus will become, right, because no more hydrogen, and the H2O picks up the hydrogen. So instead of it being H2O, it's H3O plus. Since these are charged, these are aqueous. Okay, so we just found out our balance equation. Now, we're going to get into ice tables. We're going to get into them very quickly, but we kind of did see ice tables in the last chapter. Remember, I, C, E, right? I stands for initial. C stands for change. And E stands for equilibrium. Generally speaking, you will only start with your strong acid or strong base. Let's just say that we started off with, I don't know, 2.0 molarity. Now remember, liquid water, when we do our K equations and when we do our ice tables, we don't care about this. So that's basically one assumption, right? The one assumption is that we can disregard any additions from water. So we assume, so we'll say assumption number one, Right, so number one, we assume that water, H2O, does not add concentration to H3O plus. Because if we did, you know, assume that, the math would be very, very, very hard for us. So we make an assumption that this is just acting as the solvent and it's not donating any, uh, you know, additional H3O plus to the solution. Now, the next one comes from your change in equilibrium uh, parts over here. Now, if we only started with HCN, we didn't initially start with CN minus or H3O plus, so that would be zero. Now, remember, if you didn't start off with anything, the only way up is literally up. You can only go up from there. So you could only add amounts to your product side, so plus and plus. And that means that you can only subtract from your amount that you have. Now, we don't know how much we uh, added or subtracted, but this just goes by your balanced equation, aka the coefficients. They all have one in front of each other, right? Acid and base reactions are easy because it's, o it's always going to be a one to one to one. So we just label that as x. This would technically be minus 1x, but we could just say it's minus x. This would be plus x and plus x. Now, when I add these two together, that's what equilibrium is. Equilibrium is just adding up your change and initial. So 0 plus x would be x. 0 plus x would be x. And if we come over here, 2 minus x is 2.0 minus x. Now, here's the other assumption. Remember that Ka values for weak acids are very, 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 very low. They're very, very, you know, low. They're less than one. We're talking like 10 to the negative 10th, 10 to the negative 6th, that types of numbers. Now, when you have a very, very low Ka value, that means that at equilibrium, you have mainly reactants. So the question here is that 
If you started with only reactants and you're ending with mostly reactants, do you think that this change, this minus X value is great? It's not. This is negligible. I think I spelled that right. I really hope so. Could be an E. Have no idea. Anyway, if it's negligible, that means that we can kind of treat it as if it doesn't exist. It's way too small that if we actually did two minus a very small number, you'll still get two if you're round. So the second assumption is that we can assume that the change in the weak acid, so I'll say wa, or the weak base, wub, is very small. And because of that, we can neglect the minus x. And you could just keep it as 2, and that will help us tremendously when we start doing the math, which we probably will see in a little bit. All right? But those are your two assumptions. I really hope this helped. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let's hang in there. We're almost done with the <laughs> with the acid base chapter. Where is the math? Right? We're at number 47. This is nuts. Anyway. Thank you so much. I need a glass of water and I will see you all in later lessons. Bye-bye.